Hello everybody, today I'm going to paint Studio Ghibli scenes again. This time I'm going to use Karen markers for that because this video is kindly sponsored by Karen markers. I've used them in the past before and I really love them so I'm gonna use them for those two pieces today as well. I will put a link to my favorite sets in the description box below. For the first scene I picked this one from the movie Only Yesterday and here you can see that I started to do the sketch, just a very basic sketch. By the way, I have not watched this movie. I was just really drawn to the scene. I like the contrast in there. So if you've seen this specific Studio Ghibli movie, let me know whether you like it or not. Is it a sad movie? I think it sounds like a sad movie. So I might not watch this one, but this scene is very lovely, I have to say. For this video, I painted two scenes of movies that I actually have not seen yet. Usually I paint scenes from movies that I have seen before, but yeah, I just wanted to try something new, a new look, and this was it. And I didn't completely copy the reference picture that I used because I realized in the past when I try to completely copy the Studio Ghibli pictures, I will drive myself crazy and I will obsess over the smallest of details and it's just not gonna be fun. So I just used it as an inspiration. It's still a little bit of a copy. Uh, it's somewhere in between. I kind of made it my own, but also kind of copied it. I would never claim that this is my original painting because it's just very similar to the original, but it's still different enough. So I will say it's not uh, an accurate copy either. But yeah, this is what I did here with the Karen markers and they were a blast for this specific piece because I think they really fit this style. I don't know what medium they used for the original piece. I'm sure it was not Karen markers because I'm sure they did not exist back then, but uh, maybe it was watercolors. Usually Studio Ghibli pieces have more of a gouache look to them, but this looks more like it was maybe done in watercolors or something like this. So it looks quite similar in the specific look that you get from the medium. And you can see that I started with the flowers and now I'm drawing the foreground around them. So I kind of went back and forth with the foreground and the background, just making sure that I left the parts where the flowers are because these markers obviously are not opaque, so I have to go from light to dark. But later on, I added in a little bit of gouache so that I could still get a little bit of highlights in. I think I've just worked so much with gouache lately that I can't do a piece completely without it anymore. I don't know. I recently launched my gouache extended course. It's still available, by the way, until April 20 first so if you want to get the course then purchase it until then obviously once you've bought it you can watch it indefinitely you can just only sign up until April 21st and you will learn everything about gouache in this course um, but here for now for this drawing I used mostly the Karen markers and just used the gouache for some finishing touches I think that those two mediums worked very well together. I might try that more in the future because you really get this beautiful contrast look with the vibrant colors from the current markers and then you can get the opacity from the gouache. So here you can see that I'm adding in the highlights here and I even blended the gouache a little bit with the current markers. Mm -hmm. 
And here you can see that I was using a pen for the details. I love to do that when I use Karen markers because they blend really well, especially on watercolor paper. And then you don't really get the crisp lines. So I use the blended effect that I get from the Karen markers. And then to finish off everything, I add in some line art to get it to look very crisp and I think that way it works really well so I think I've now gotten into a good routine so here's the first finished picture that we drew today and for the second one I again picked a scene from a movie that I have not seen Apparently this is from the movie Tales from Earthsea, if I'm saying that right. So again, I'm making a rough sketch of where I want everything to be and just outlining it basically. And again, I did not completely copy it, but I tried my best to somewhat do that because the point of copying these scenes is to learn as much as I can from them and so I really try to take a look at how they used colors and how they painted grass in this case. I think I learned a lot about grass from this piece because there's a lot in it, you will see. And I just at first put down this very light sand shade color and then I later on went in with all of the green tones you can see i started here just very carefully trying out the different colors that i had picked for this and then i blended everything together here i used then a lighter green tone to blend and i just went back and forth a lot with this and it was just really a bunch of layers and a bunch of squiggles and lines and uh, I think it uh, looks very well at the end. It's not perfect but I'm somewhat happy with the piece and I learned a lot about grass which is the main purpose of doing this like I said is to learn something and you can see that I even added in some orange to the grass so you can add in a lot of different shades. There's the brown shades from all of the soil that you can see there's the very bright green shades then there's the more orange shades so we have all different kinds of colors here and that's gonna make it look much more interesting and make it come alive much more and it's not just one flat tone of green so if you wanna kind of up level your grass painting or landscape painting in general make sure you don't just use one type of green use different types of green mix different colors in maybe there's blue tones in there maybe there's warmer tones like the orange that I used here maybe there's yellow tones in there or brown tones that's just gonna make it a whole lot more interesting so that's what I did here I think at this point it was looking a little bit messy I blended everything in a little bit more and I think once I added in the line art it all really came together so I think this was kind of the ugly stage it wasn't completely ugly but sometimes you really have to trust the process because I was not completely happy with this piece at that point but I think I got there in the end and you can see now I'm doing more of the background again using this tan sand color. I think this color must be one of my favorite markers because it's so useful for all of the undertones and for drawing sand. I think I've used that one quite a lot in the past and now I'm completely ruining the tip of it. No, it's not ruined. I just added in a little bit of a brown and mixed my colors a little bit. And if you do that, you just have to keep on drawing with the pen and the tip will get clean again so it, it doesn't actually ruin it but it's it can be a little bit scary to do that but you can get somewhat of an in-between shade and that's what I wanted to do and you can see here that you can also mix the colors so I did the orange
orange first and then I went over with gray and then I used a little bit of water. I didn't want to completely blend this but I wanted it to look a little bit softer so I just used a bit of water and put it on there, let it sit for a bit. You could blend that even more if you wanted to but I still wanted the details there just slightly softer and yeah I'm just going back and forth with everything at that point we're still missing the trees they're going to appear pretty soon so here you can see that I'm doing the clouds and because I put this tan color down first this is a warmer shade now so mixing those colors can really pay off and give you an interesting result because you get different variations of it you can make your gray tone more or less warm that way so here I started with the trees but still not finished just the main part because I wanted to finish the trees off with a pen and here you can see now that I'm going in with all of the little line art details and finishing off those trees and I think now that they're there it looks much better I think this landscape really needs those trees to look good and come alive and it needs those crispy details at the end so I really love the combination of the more blended colors and the crispy details so this is the second uh, scene that I painted for this video let me know in the comments down below which one is your favorite Studio Ghibli movie what would you like to see me paint next let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out Karen markers. Here you can see that I added in a little bit of gouache to this scene as well. So don't forget to check out my gouache course if you haven't done so. I will leave all of the links in the description box down below. So here you can see I'm doing all of the finishing details and really making this scene pop a little bit more. I think this combination of Karen markers, fine liner pen and a little bit of gouache, I think this works really well. So here are the scenes that we did for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Goodbye!